Okay, we're live. And actually, I started this whole thing, and I totally forgot to put it on uh, live broadcast. So if you're not in here, then you can see this later. So what we were chatting about, um, if you guys, I think maybe Adventures of the f stop might be chatting. If you guys could talk to them while I chat away with you guys. Um, what we were talking about is Caleb is in 11, uh, level 20, and Caleb is my fellow friend and house light vendor, and he is making a book and really awesome, doing some great artwork. And so uh, I had a couple people ask me about macro lens painting, and I thought it, it's super easy. We're going to go through it really quick. But the whole reason why I was discussing this earlier with them is that I was talking about creating art and what you like to do. And so I love macro, I love flowers, but I started, I thought to myself, I want to do something different. So I went ahead and did what I'm going to show you. I'm going to do a, a, a little hangout thing or screen share. And what I was talking to them about is expressing your own art. The Arcanum is about pushing and, you know, getting you to explore new things. You don't always have to agree with, uh, with masters and apprentices, but I still think that you should pay attention and listen to them. But then also when you have your own creations, just go for it. And you actually hear Trey say stuff like that. I didn't care what anybody else thought. Well, guess what? I didn't care about what anybody else thought about my macro lens painting. And um, what I was telling them is that popular photography found me and loved my macro lens pa paintings. And I was so humbled that they wrote an article and I uh, got some money from, uh, you know, popular photography for just expressing how I do my art. So with that, then I got other people to under you know see my work and met some new friends and you know it just leads on to new things so with that said we'll go ahead and show you I'll do a screen share and show you the actual work and we will let me click on me real quick and then I'll do a screen share Turn the screen and then I'll share this we'll go crazy for a second oop everybody's oh house light bender that's who it is <laughs> Oh, sorry guys. Okay. Okay, so here is the work. And what I want to do is just explain. I'm going to show you how I do it really quick, and then we'll go into Lightroom really quick and do a couple processing. But um, can you guys hear the dinging from everyone? Can you guys hear the chatty in the background? Uh, have been. Okay, Not lately, sure. but have been. Okay. Okay, I'm going to shut that off. Okay, so these are, I've done everything with flowers, and I wanted to show you this because it is a little different. You do need to use a macro lens. I'll explain that in a little bit. So these are the macro lens paintings that I wanted to show you today. Now, this one is not a macro lens painting to the left. And the reason why I wanted to show you that is because that is a motion blur of some trees. And that's where you see a lot of people doing is like motion blurs and stuff. Well, macro lens painting, um, for the reason why I call this, is basically you're going to take a subject, you're going to keep it, hold it for about one second, and then you're going to paint basically with the lens. You'll see what I'm saying. So you'll take the flowers. Roses work really well. And I'll explain while I'm shooting how I got these different um, pieces of work. Uh, this is a black background. But you can see that there is a form. There's some contrasting colors. Uh, there is a, a it's not just a mush. And when I when I photograph, there is a lot of hit and misses. I've just learned to know what to look for now. But again, um, you should use a macro lens. So that that's what we're going to work on today is this. And I will get out of screen. Stop screen sharing. Okay, let me take a quick that out. All right, you guys can see me now? Yes. Cool. All right, let's put the water over here. Okay, the puppy's not bugging me, so it's working out perfect. Okay, today I have my 100 millimeter macro. You can use really any macro lens. And the reason why I say to use a macro lens is because you can actually get up close, and I'm going to show you some flowers right now. Because you do want to have my range of a shutter speed is actually one second to five seconds. If you go less than one second, you usually don't have enough motion blur to make anything fun. And if you go past five seconds, 
then it just turns into mush. So I manually do exposures, but with a, a macro lens, again, the way it's cut, macro lenses are flat. So I've actually tried to do it with a wide angle. It was just too much information, too much mess. And then I also tried to do it on my 70 to 200. And that kind of worked, but it still didn't get me some of the closeness that I wanted on, say, a petal or a leaf. So we'll go ahead, and I'm going to show you now the, the flowers. And I'll, I got it on a really quick stand. Let's see. Let me bring this over. And I'm using right now, let me get over here. Right now I'm just using natural light. If you want to do it outside, you probably will need a polarizer or a neutral density because you do want to keep everything uh, nice and slow. Can you guys see that okay? All right. So I've, I went to the store and I just bought a whole bunch of flowers. Sometimes when I photograph, I'll just use one flower like this. And if I want, I'll go outside and use the sky for a blue background if I want, or a black background. Um, look at the flowers. You always got to pay attention to the structures. The roses turned out really, really well. And stuff like this, like a geranium, that color right there would probably be a mess, but it's great for background. So if you're photographing and you say that you want this uh, pretty yellow, and the you know maybe the main focal point but then you want some purple in the background then you'll just place it kind of next to it and uh, we'll go ahead and start shooting let me see if I can let's see if I can get so you guys can see what I'm doing and I'm only going to do a couple shots I did some pre shots so this way you guys can we'll just go into Lightroom let me take off my glasses and I'll just talk about what I'm doing so I'm going to start with this flower. I have natural light. It's bright. I, like I said, I do all manual. And then what I'll do is I'm, I'm looking at the form of the flower in my macro lens. And it looks, again, like flames. So right now I'm at two seconds. And I'll, sometimes I'll focus on autofocus. And then when I get it set, I'll switch to manual so it's not going crazy. And I feel that if you get too close in a macro lens, then it just becomes a mush. So you have to start playing the ins and outs. Um, this is the only reason why I want macro lens is because I know I can get kind of close and get, say, a couple of petals that are in focus and the rest will be out of focus. It's not that I'm trying to do a normal macro photog photograph and just trying to get that all in focus because this is nothing about being in focus at all. So with that, I'm going to do this one is at two seconds. And I'm going to do it at 19, F19, and we'll see what happens. And then I paint. And I'll, I'll look at my histogram. Whoops. My histogram is important. That just totally went way out of that. See, this, I'm going to try to talk and do this at the same time. So, and then paint. And it's not working. Only because you guys are here. Hold on one sec. All right, here we go. That one worked. So what I'm doing, I'll do something easier. I'll look at the red. I'll see a petal or the inside that I like. And then I'm going to focus on it. And then look at my background because if the background's too light, it's going to look funky. If the background's too dark, you know, it could be a problem. I'm going to go to four seconds on this one, and I'm at F19. I'm going to one 1,000 and then paint what I want. That probably will turn out good. So if I look at a petal that I like, this is total macro right here. I want it in, I want it in focus. One 1,000, paint. I'm trying to get green now. That one could be... Pretty cool. Let's see. I'm going to come over here real quick. Let's move you guys over. We'll do two more because I don't want to take too much of your time. So now I'm looking at the way this is formed. And I'm liking that. So I will 
Make sure it's in focus. That's the thing. People don't, you know, it's like you got to get it in focus for a second. And then once I usually count like one 1,000 and then start painting what colors I want. I'm just getting two. Let me do one. Okay. And let's do that. I like the way that concept was. That was pretty. So I'm always looking at the form of the flower. Then what's going to happen with it afterwards? What colors do I want? These purples and yellows are pretty cool. That looks pretty nice. Okay. Do you guys have any questions before I stop? So basically what I'm seeing is that, you know, you focus on your subject for about a second and then you and then you start the painting painting for the next two, three, or four seconds that the shutter's open. Yes. Okay. That's exactly what it is. And you're looking at your exposure and normally, you know, you don't back in traditional photographing you don't want a really wide aperture, you know, like 22, 27, but it doesn't really matter on this. This is going to be all blurry anyways. So if you have a high f-stop, that's okay because most of the time I'm messing with that anyways. But it is like, again, trial and error, and it's, 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 I'm noticing for me it's hard to talk to you guys and focus on my work <laughs> because usually it's like, Caleb and I went, and we had a great time with, uh, at the photo walk. But I have to admit that I am a type of person that when I meet people, I just want to chat. And to actually photograph is a little different when I'm with people. I kind of have my own thing. I, I'm in my own zone. So right now it's at 4 seconds at 19, F stop 19. And I'm liking the way the leave is, so 1 1,000. Then I'm going to black. I have a, like I said, I had a black. That one turned out good. Okay. All right. Let me move this over. And then, if I can get this over, hold on one second. All right. Really yeah. interesting to see how these are going to turn out now, because that just looked like, I don't know, yeah. I can't imagine what they're going to turn out like. It's so it's, I'll show you right now in Lightroom what I did before, and then I'll pop these up. Okay, so these are my old ones uh, that I just did a little bit before that. I need to, and then I'm going to, I'll bump these in too. I'll go ahead and put this in Lightroom. Where are we? Cheers. Oh, that's my match. Okay. Then I'll take this out. Oops, so we're doing this. Okay. Oops, didn't want to do that. Okay. Let me pop my card in while we're doing this. So this right here, oops, sorry guys. Like this, these two right here are going to be cool. These are going to be mush in the beginning, I could tell. But these guys right here will have some dimension. I could go on for, truthfully, probably about a half an hour. I have to get in the flow of things. And as I could tell, that it's kind of difficult for me to photograph and um, talk to you guys at the same time. So this is a new experience for me. <laughs> so let's import these. And we will, okay. It's still going. Let's look at the, let's look at the ones before where this is working. So right before I did a test because I was curious on how things were going to work and one of my favorites is this one right here and see how that is it's it's raw I shoot raw and let's go to development so 
it looks pretty boring, but I can see the lines from here because I've played with this so much. I could tell that this is a winner right here. This is something that will be really cool. And when you're, when I always, what I do when I process is I'll go through the regular rituals of having, you know, throwing my um, camera standard and playing with my RGB here. And then I'll go in and fix my lens corrections. It's a must. And then what I'll do is, uh, sometimes I don't want to keep it the same color. So for this one, when I was playing with it, I really liked fluorescent. This is your own art. And I love the way that looks. So I know for a fact that I will keep this one and I will probably end up really going to town with it and see what it does. Um, but it's, it's something totally depends on how you feel about the image and what you're trying to you know, express. But what I'm sp expressing right here is these beautiful lines that come in like this. So I'll probably take it in a little bit more and then bring those out because it looks like a I don't know, I really like it. But let's go ahead and look at the other ones real quick and see if I got anything out of that. Let's go into the library, and I'm on my laptop, so hopefully. Let's see, previous. So these ones, uh, this one right here looks really cool. So I also play with it. Let's pop it up. See these lines in here, how pretty that is, and the sweeping? Sometimes you'll get mess in here, and that's why I was asked. That's why I was saying you guys really need to pay attention to your backgrounds and your foregrounds because if you have anything super bright, it's going to show up. Uh, so I don't know if I want to keep it that way or this way. See, sometimes, like I say, sometimes I'll just change it totally. You know, kind of crazy. I like the way it flows down this way. So with this, this one I think is a winner, and I'll actually. Let me just do this real quick because I'm anal about stuff. Standards. I have RGB, and let me go in here real quick. Whoops. And then I'm telling. I'm going to see how I feel about this. Okay. I'm already liking that. I might do a little bit more green. But just for video purpose, let's just do it really quick. I usually don't do auto, but let's see what auto does. See, it's too bright. So alt, option, reset. And I will just give it a little bit more exposure, not too much. What I like to do is actually play with the different tungstens. Like that, eh, I'm not really digging that. Or I'll just do a custom if it depends. What is auto going to do? I like in the greens, so I would, as you could tell, that after you start playing with this, it is now time for you to really focus on post processing. So maybe I want to bring out some green more or not, maybe darken it. And then what I'll do next is just kind of play with this stuff and give it a day or two and leave it alone. And see, just to, like I think in the cohort we had something about just giving your eyes a break or one of the masters had said that. I totally agree with that. Sometimes when you're just working on stuff, you just need a break to see if that's where you're, what you're feeling when it comes to this. I would probably even bring this into um, this Nick maybe and give it a little bit of more definition in here with some points and some colors. So that's basically it. It's super easy, but as you can see, I am focusing on a certain point. It's not just one big blur, you know, on, on this, on just making a motion blur. There is I did take a second to make sure that I have this in, you know, with the details of it. If you just get something like this as mush, it could be cool, but for me and my macro lens painting, I gotta have one thing that's distinctive. This right here is a leaf, part of a leaf I could tell. 
So who knows, maybe by playing with it, uh, yeah. It could turn out to something pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, I, I like this as well. I don't like, I mean, I like, I don't normally like something to be a subject, but, mm -hmm. you know, for something, you know, like a texture, like, 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 mm -hmm. like I, I think this is wonderful, really. It, it, it reminds me of a Jackson Pollock painting where, yeah. and I don't, I don't understand any of his stuff. <laughs> I can't look at it close because looking at it close just makes it dribble to me. But when when I step back, you know, this is 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 for some reason. I mean, I don't understand it, which is another aspect of it that I like. And you know, I mean, depending on on what slider you push, um, you get a whole different range mm -hmm. of, of color. I, I mean, I can look at it by itself or I could look at it as a background for something. I, I, I really love this. I think this is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it is a lot of fun because uh, that's why I was like the con like this one. I love all the colors here. I'm, yeah. I'm digging this. And I like this one right here might be a winner for me because of the leaf. Because I like something that leads me in. So this is lead me in and then all these colors. So I might be able to pull this two off. And there's a little bit of flower here. That's just uh, because of my own artist statement, um, I've had these in shows, and that's basically what I'm talking about in my in my artist statement is basically that my uh, my I, I love flowers and what we've done to them to manipulate them to make them beautiful. These flowers that I got from the store were not out in the wild, and even the wildflowers are absolutely gorgeous. But we as humans really um, appreciate these gorgeous flowers. So this is my way of expressing how gorgeous these can be even when they're not in focus. So that, you know, that that's just part of my artist statement for these macro lens paintings. You guys can do lens painting on anything. You can go outside and get up close and uh, on trees or whatever and just but the thing that I like about it's a little bit different than rec regular motion blurs. You know what I mean? I don't know. Motion blur is fun and everything. I just want it a little bit different. So that's why with this, I'm liking the lines, the green here. I'm liking the way this flows. I might even manipulate this to the left over here, as you can see, into a different color. You know, I really go in and check, change things up a little bit to my own artistic way. But it's still a fun way. I haven't done anything to this image at all. And I could see already, just having the greens and the flow of this flower, how much fun I could have in post-processing. So it's, you know, it's doing it with a macro lens for about one second, having your shutter speed from two to uh, five seconds at the most, and adjusting your f-stop and ISO to make the exposure correct. If you get too bright, then you need to put a neutral density filter. And if you are uh, too dark, then obviously you can use some reflectors and stuff. But most of the time, you could do natural light just out of your window if you want to just do something like this. I'm just saying, if you're going out, I've, you know, it's, it's fun even to go out when you're hiking and you see something really cool. The contrasting colors are very powerful. So look at your color wheel if you um, don't know the colors and start memorizing it and when you're walking in the field you'll see something you're like ooh that's really cool that's going to be awesome so did, did you have any questions on any of this I'm just kind of curious on how see I don't for me I, I'm not digging that one but this would see how the first two were totally out of to me it was that that's just a mess but that's my personal opinion uh, this one I'm liking the leaf I could go for that one this one, I'm liking this flower, and there's actually a couple things in here. I could see a flower in focus over here, so I probably will play with this one, too. And that's just a matter of a little bit, and I can't believe I even got anything halfway. I mean, like, whoops. Sorry, guys. You guys know I always do that. Um, but I could see a flower in here, a flower, and then this all the different colors. So I can see some structure and some a way of playing with it. So... Should I stop sharing? Are you guys? Do you have any questions? Yeah, it just uh, seems so simple, but fascinating at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. 
Yeah, it's super simple. I know. It's just, you know what I think it is? It's just nobody else has really done this. No, you know, that's what I mean. Just go out there and do some, huh? It's a cool trick to know. Yeah, it's just something different. It's very artistic. I can see the flower. Yeah, very impressive. Well, I love Monet. So he, he is one of my favorite artists. So it kind of reminds me of him a little bit. But yeah, as you can yeah. see, you know, from from the oh, oops, sorry guys, from the uh, let's see. As you can see, what I showed you before. Sometimes I get really, you know, impressionistic like this over here to the right, and then sometimes I'll have more depth. And that's just like one second, and then taking my lens now that you've seen what I've done, and then just using just the one flower with a black back black background and then for one second focusing in on the flower and then swirling it around to make the stem you know flow so that's and this is one of my favorites too I love this whoops we'll just go real quick this is one of my favorites just funky stuff real fun um, to play and it's all about one second in focus and then moving your camera this is a yellow daisy with the with the background of uh, the sky. So, you know, take your stuff outside. This one's totally different. And like I say, flowers are super easy. When you do a flower, because the petals are circular, it's easy to take the lens and then do a circular motion with the subject, and you'll have something fun like this. So pay attention to the subject and flow with the subject a little bit. This one I took the lens and I just kind of flirted around in circles instead of up and down. This one is actually one flower and five seconds. I took, I can't remember if it's a tulip, I think it's a tulip, and then I just moved it up and down really fast in short, quick increments. And I probably did maybe a two second exposure here. A two second, well no, it's probably about five. You know what, it probably tells me. Hold on one second. <laughs> Shoot, I, you know, I'm so bad. I, <laughs> I can't, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, I'd have to go into the metadata, but this one's on my, lens, on my actual. Okay, this is my favorite, too, because it's an iris, and my mom's name's iris. So there's certain things, like that one is, like, totally not, not, no. But that's it. I just wanted to show you those ones. That's great. Let me, let me get out of stop sharing. Can't wait to have a go. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, oh, so let me, if you don't have any questions, we'll stop the screen sharing and have a little after party. No, no more questions? Okay.